Hello and welcome. Uh, during the closing sessions of European DrupalCons, there are announcements of fun facts about the conference. And uh, there is a who traveled the farthest. And uh, there's always someone from New Zealand. And uh, I tried to get this prize here because uh, I'm from Hungary. Uh, I've traveled more than 18,000 kilometers uh, from my hometown. I mean, I asked from Europe. Ah, huh? oh, damn it. <laughs> we, ah, okay, <laughs> good. So, yeah, it's hard to find a farther uh, place on Earth. Uh, uh, to verify my theory, I've done a uh, really precise and extensive research. I've installed uh, an app called uh, Transparent Earth on my phone. It's an augmented reality app. Uh, it can show you what's on the other side of the planet, right? And then just lay it down uh, on my desk, and this is how, what it showed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm from the other side of the planet, and I'm glad to be here, and I can show you this really awesome module, Entity Browser. Uh, I will show you how to use it to uh, build rich uh, user interfaces. Um, when it um, comes to referencing entities. Uh, I will explain the basics because the configuration of the module can be confusing sometimes. And I will show you some examples and ideas how you can build your own beautiful entity browsing interfaces. Now it's saying beautiful, I mean something uh, great, useful and exciting, so don't expect to see much visually beautiful things. I'll leave it to the teamers and the designers but I hope you will see the potential UX beauty as much as I do. Uh, before we jump right into it, just hands up who've used Entity Browser before. Okay, a couple. Who have, who have built their own, like configured your own uh, Entity Browser or just using some presets? Cool. Had some troubles with it or confusions? <laughs> okay, so, uh, right. Cool. Uh, just. Before jumping right into Entity Browser, just, just to clarify some basics about uh, Drupal 8 and entities. So uh, in Drupal 8, everything is entity, like nodes, taxonomy terms, user, even file is an entity, or a media, or anything else that modules can define. And uh, sometimes we need to build relationships uh, between these entities, and we use the entity reference field, basically, to, to do that. A good example is the text field on the node or the image field. Uh, but sometimes we need to reference from one node to another. For example, we need to build a related content section on the page. We just need to you know, handpick uh, some related content that's related to the current uh, article. Or we, we can use like an entity queue, uh, which is a like can provide you a custom list so you can reference uh, these nodes, like you can build a recommended articles section, which you can put on a block or on the front page, so you can you know, manually control what nodes you want to see them there and in what order. So this is where entity reference uh, field is. And um, so in terms of what we have in Drupal core, uh, for entity reference field widget, uh, we have this selection, so we can choose a select list, uh, a checkbox radio button list, or an autocomplete. And uh, the first two works if you have just a couple of items, 10 or a bit more, but if you have more to choose from, you, you can stick to, you, you can use the autocomplete, and that's, that's the only option you have. Uh, just, um, this is a, a Triple, fresh Drupal install, nothing crazy. I've just uh, generated some content, so I, I have like more than 500 uh, nodes. And so what I did, I just added a extra field to the article called related content. So, and this is what we have, right? So I can just uh, type the node title and just choose uh, a node. And sometimes this is not enough. So what, what if we have hundreds of thousands of nodes or just don't think about just nodes. Uh, it can be anything. It can be any entity, your custom entity as well. 
and so you, you want to build something uh, more useful. And uh, this is where Entity Browser uh, comes in. Uh, so Entity Browser is a module, it was uh, built uh, in part of the media initiative uh, to be able to browse media. But because media is an entity as anything else, basically you can use it uh, to browse any entity as you want. Um, so what I will do, I will, I will try to, to do some like live demo. So just shout out if I'm doing too uh, quick, you cannot follow, just, just, uh, just say. So um, what, you, what we can do uh, here, just a quick win. Let's start with a quick win. I will, uh, uh, I will install a module called Content Browser. Now, Content Browser is basically, it's an extension of Entity Browser. It just provides some extra configuration so I don't have to go and manually uh, create things. Uh, it will install Entity Browser, of course. And um, what I can do now, if I just go back and go to, uh, to the Manage Form Display, this is where we configure the widget. Uh, here's the related content. So this is what we have, autocomplete. And I can just change it to Entity Browser. And uh, yeah, Browse for Content. And I will just uh, unclick this and uh, just save. So if I now go back to, to this uh, Add New Article, I have now a Select Content button. And if I click that, it opens up uh, in a new uh, model window and I have a list of nodes and I can uh, filter by ty type or title uh, and I can select multiple uh, items and I can just click this and uh, it's added to the selection and then I can move things around if, if I want to so changing the order uh, those are remove uh, items so uh, it's, it's a bit better, but you can say, oh, right, this is still, I just can't, uh, you know, search for the title. But this is basically a view. So you can go and change it, and you can add your uh, filters as you want. You can add your fields as you want. You can change it to be displayed in a table or something, so you don't have to uh, use this, this type of uh, display. So you have basically full control on this thing. Uh, let me give another example. I will install another module called uh, File Browser. And File Browser it requires some drop zone JS libraries. So if, if, if you're trying this module, just make sure that you, uh, you add those libraries as well uh, to your setup. But it also adds some extra configuration uh, to your available entity browser. So if I go back to, and here's the image field, and I can change this uh, widget to entity browser, and uh, changes to browse for files model. I will just, uh, save this. And now if I go back to this page, I have this widget. If I click, I have an upload section, so I can just select files. I can select multiple because, and, and because it's a drop zone JS widget here, I can also drag files into this area. Um, and then I can add these to the selection. But what I also can do, I can go to the file listing and I can browse the existing files because these these are also entities in the system already so I just need to reference these and again this you can modify this for your own needs so you can add more filters or you can set default filters or whatever you can do with views basically and here I can just remove some and use those and here we go we have uh, images attached and if I click back these images are here so I can still change the selection here as well so 
is really cool, right? So <laughs> you like it? Okay, I, I like it too. Now, um, uh, just to, to clarify things, uh, let's let's talk about a bit uh, about the basics. So uh, because you, you have to know what 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 is what what is for uh, if you want to you know make some custom changes in these things. So first thing is the field widget itself. Uh, what's on the node form, for example? So this is the field widget. And uh, you can configure your field widget uh, on the, uh, can you see that? Is it a bit blurred? Anyway, I'll, I will show that uh, live as well. But you, you probably uh, saw, uh, see that before. Uh, so this is where you configure your field, basically. So it's nothing uh, uh, crazy in there, but uh, what Entity Browser provides, it adds some extra, uh, some configurations you can choose from. So this is what happens on the field widget uh, level. But we have another level, which is the Entity Browser itself. So you have to, you have to choose an existing Entity Browser if you're using uh, the modules like I've just installed, or you can create your own. And the entity browser is basically just a, a, like a set of configurations. Um, and uh, it has a, a couple of plugins. So it has first a display plugin. Now the display plugin uh, is, it, it controls what happens when you click on that button basically. So you can pop, pop, pop up a, a model window or you can embed it into uh, an iframe. So like on the right, there is an iframe embedded uh, into your form. So it's just controlled by this display plugin. Or you can set uh, another display plugin just to use the model. Um, and so this is what the, the first thing on this configuration page is, which I will show you in a minute. So how you wanna do the display. Uh, the next thing is the widget selector. So you've seen uh, I had two tabs, like the upload files and the files listing on the second example, but the first example I didn't have that thing. So you can choose if you want these tabs or not, and even you can choose to use uh, like a drop down, so you don't have to stick with tabs. If you have like more than 10, it's probably better to use a drop down uh, to choose from these tabs. And um, yeah, or you can say, okay, I'm just using single widget. I don't want to do tabs at all. Uh, the bottom section is called the selection display. This is optional as well. So you can say, okay, no, no selection display, please. Or you can use this multi-step selection display, or you can build your own view to display it here. Um, so it's really flexible, right? And what another good thing is that these are all pluggable. So because it's using Drupal 8's plugin system, basically you can build your own plugin for the display or for the widget selector or for the selection display. Or you can even build your own widget and it's, that's the main section. So the widget is uh, it's what's displayed on the main area. This is required, so you have to, be, you have, to have a widget. And the views is, uh, the widget I've used on these examples. But um, yeah, this is the, the last step where you configure. But for widgets, there are multiple options as well. What Entity Browser provides is a view and uh, an upload widget. Uh, but you can enable a module that uh, can let you add an entity form. I will show you in a minute. Uh, or, or these drop zone JS widgets are available if you enable the file browser module. So you have plenty of options and you can add multiple and that's, that's why we need the, the tabs or the select, the, those widget selector plugins if you have multiple. Right? Can you f follow me? Just, it's okay, please? Good. Um, so going back to, let's, let's just do our own thing. Let's just build a, uh, Entity browser, and an example I've I've prepared is an entity queue. So I've just prepared an entity queue, which is a recommended articles, and uh, what it has is just have the the standard uh, widget for the autocomplete. 
and we want to change that. And the first thing we need to do, we need to configure our entity browser. So, and in order to do that, we need to go to this place, so configuration content altering entity browsers. And here are the entity browsers that's been configured by the modules I've just installed. If you don't install these content browser and uh, file browser modules, this list is empty. So you, you have to add your own. Uh, and if you try that, you will see this message. And this is for a reason. Uh, so you will need C tools uh, for this. Uh, and you might think, okay, why is not set to it as a dependency? Uh, it's because, as you've seen, uh, you can, we can use the entity browser without the C tools module. But we, what you cannot do, you cannot edit or change or add your, new, uh, your own entity browser. So, um, yeah, now it's enabled. It's, and it's because uh, it's using this multi-step uh, form, basically from, from C tools. So now we can, we can build our own uh, entity browser. So just let's just give it a name, recommended articles, select a browser, let's call it, right. So uh, for the display plugin, I will choose model. Uh, there is a standalone form selection uh, available, but it's, it's basically for testing. So it's, you can't use it uh, in real life at the moment. Uh, I'll just change this to single widget and just keep it uh, simple and no selection display. So the next sec the, on the next screen, I will uh, configure uh, my display. And uh, I just, uh, if I just remove these two wires, it will be a responsive. So it's, and I can also say like uh, add articles. So I can change the text of the, that link that's displayed on the form. This is what the display plugin uh, has in control of. Now the next two screens are empty because I haven't selected a widget selector or a selection display, so no configuration there. You just need to step through it. And the last thing is, uh, the, the, the main thing is the widget itself. And what we will do, we will need a view. But, so if I just go uh, here, these are the views that are already configured from these previous two examples, the, the modules I've installed. But I've, I've uh, prepared uh, a view. Let's just open up a new tab. I've prepared a view. Uh, it's called uh, Recommended Article Browser. And uh, it's not listed there. And it's because I've just prepared the view, but I haven't configured to work with Entity Browser. And in order to do that, you, you have to do two things. And this is, this is what's really important. So you have, first thing, you have to add a um, entity browser display to this view. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing. This is how you tell views to work with entity browser and vice versa. Uh, and the next thing you will need to do, you will need to add a special field called Entity Browser Box Select Form. So if I'm just adding this, and just let me rearrange to move it to the first. So what it does, it added these, these checkboxes, basically. And this is uh, what controls your selection of the entities. And the rest of the view is just standard. I've just prepared with some example uh, exposed filters, and it's this is a table display. So I've just you, know, you you guys know know this how to how to build a view, and, and uh, I've just prepared it for an example. So um, if I just go back here, I will need to remove this. It's a bit confusing sometimes. So you have to do this again. And now I can select my recommended article browser. And if I click finish, my browser is ready to use. So wh what I need to do, I need to uh, attach this to the field. So I will go to the entity queues and manage my form display. And I'll change this widget 
and here is the recommended article browser. So this is the new entity browser I've just configured. And uh, what I will do, I will do some, some magic. I will just change it to rendered entity and teaser. So what this does, this controls how my selection will be displayed on the form. And uh, this show widget details open, it just opens up that container. And uh, you can uh, control how you want to add your new, newly selected items. So you can append or prepend to the list or you can edit the list. I'll just set it to prepend. And if I now go back to entity queues, here's my add articles and here's my view so I can use it. It has the pager, it has everything so I can just uh, select multiple items and what happens here because I've chosen to display the node title in this uh, area it's like a visible editor so like content editors can use it to see how exactly this will look like on the front so you can you know you can even set up your own uh, display mode for this for this node for example and you can use that so you don't have to use the teaser you can you can set up your own and so they can just move things around like drag and drop or, or remove items as well or edit in place how cool is that and um, let me just show another cool thing what you can add to this to this thing if you go and enable a module Entity Browser IEF, which means uh, Inline Entity Form Integration. So I've just enable this quickly. And go back to my Entity Browser. I can add an Entity Form as another widget. So now I have two widgets. Let me just name this. So this will be an Add uh, Exist. Uh, exist Okay, and uh, new article. So what you can do, you can set this to be able to add a new article, or it can be anything, as I said. So it can, if, if you're referencing to a media item, or if you're referencing to a custom entity, you can create that from place I'll just uh, show you but in order to do that I will need to change this to uh, tabs because I have now multiple uh, widgets so I'll just change this uh, one good good tip about this step-by-step uh, -step form you have to go to the very end and you have to click finish otherwise it won't get saved so if you just you know, hang around on, on the middle, it, it won't get saved. So this finish button is just doing the saving. And now if I go back to my entity queue, uh, here is the new article uh, tab. So I can, I can create a new article from here, save it and boom, there is it. And also I can browse from the existing ones and I can do this in one step as well if I want. So if I go back to uh, Entity Browsers and uh, change, I will need to change this to multi-step selection display because I'm doing multiple selections on different tabs. And uh, it's going to, now the selection display has some configuration, I'll just leave this as is. And what I will do, I will just click on the tick on this automatically submit selection as well so it will have a cool effect because if you go back to here I can now select multiple things here it's been added to my selection and I can add new article as well right and it's added to to the list and I can use this and boom there we go. And of course, I can go back and edit and so forth. So, how do you like it? Is it good? Thanks. Okay. But, uh, so, 
if, if you think it's, well, it's not beautiful enough, uh, yeah, well, I admit that it needs some uh, improvements. Uh, um, and the issue queue has a lot of bugs uh, open. So if you have time, uh, please go to the issue queue and, and see if you can fix uh, something or help with this module. Or uh, if you find a new bug or something, you just please go to the issue queue and report it. Um, yeah, because as you've seen, um, I think, yeah, Entity Browser gives us a really powerful tool to, to give entity reference fields to a new, new level, basically. And um, yeah, I think it's very exciting and I see a lot of potential UX improvements in the future, um, not just for referencing uh, entities, but overall because of these kind of uh, improvements in Drupal. Uh, we, use, we use this at Technocrat uh, for a, a large content heavy website and the client likes it and I hope you and your clients will like it too. Thank you for your attention. Great, thank you so much Roland. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'll pass the mic around because um, we need everyone to speak into the mic since I recorded. Hi. Um, yeah, I just recall uh, when you were showing the default entity browser um, that you had a what appeared to be like a views view of um, rendered entities that mm -hmm. you were able to select and you clicked on it and it had like a little checkbox mm -hmm. on it to show that you selected it. Are you able to configure the display mode of, of those rendered entities to change the way, you know, change the way that they display for selection but still have that, you to know. To be that honest, it didn't work to me. Like it, it's working uh, for the uh, the content browser. So if you install the content browser module, those checkboxes that uh, com those come from the content browser module, and that display thing is as well. So it's not using the, the standard uh, rendered entity uh, field. Right. Yeah, but that's uh, that's a new new view uh, plugin that this content browser module provides. And I think uh, there's some issue because I couldn't, for, my, for myself, I couldn't configure this properly. So it would be better to use the, the this view that Content Browser provides and just make changes as, as I want instead of doing my own. Right. Um, I've just got one quick one more before, before I pass it on to someone else. Just um, there's, there seems to be um, a lot of uh, crossover here between this module and the Paragraphs module, at least what the features that it can provide are. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, attempt to merge the, with these or um, to provide just an alternative to Paragraphs? Or uh, I have no information on that. <laughs> I'm not the module maintainer, so the module maintainers may, may know. We can ask them. Okay, thanks. No worries. Does anyone Questions? else have a question? Yeah, Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I mean, it's less of a question, but more than sort of thanks. Um, I've hacked away at um, the entity reference view autocomplete fields and inline entity forms and various other situations, and you can push mm -hmm. it to a certain extent. But this is actually, you know, a nice little space in the middle. I presume you've played around with some of that stuff <laughs> yeah. as well before you made this. So that's, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. Have you have you used the same? Um, have you basically extended the entity reference views technique, or have you kind of come in in your own way? No, I've I've used. You've this. You've just extended it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. I think I've used both. So I've, I just did my own. Uh, th that side uh, I was using these had multiple examples of these referencing things. So for for some we used like tabs and custom table views. For some we using the extension of the the content browser view. What's it one over here? Hey, thanks for the great demo. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, I was just wondering for say what you've made there to wrap that say into a module. Would it just be a case of exporting the config and having that in sort of the install? So As you would do normally in Drupal 8, so you can export these configurations. So yeah, there's nothing sort of special. Not, not, nothing crazy. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool, thanks. No worries. Any more questions? Uh, yes, 
Yes, thank you for that uh, very uh, interesting presentation. Um, I just have a question in relation to the media in terms of images. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way along that path where you would have a widget or some sub-module that would handle uh, sizing of images as you select or as you attach to it? There um, are some modules that do that, I think. You can either do cropping as well. So uh, I haven't played with those, but I, I heard that it's maybe possible. So you can try. But there is a like there is a new crop library for Drupal 8, and there are like I think two crop modules that using that library. So you can choose which you want it. Like there is a like a focal point or something. And there is yeah, a manual to crop. The center. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, anything, um, the microphone, please. And for the recording, yeah, just yeah, sure. thanks. Um, but you're basically just rendering the entity form in a modal, right? So anything the entity, you know, you can do with the entity in isolation, you can just do it in that. So you're just providing it in a different context. Yeah. So basically, if Drupal can do it, you can do it in this context, which is really nicely built. Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, yeah, I was wondering, does the entity browser, like when you build a media browser, does the media browser use entity browser? Yes. It so does. the media, the the file browser module you're talking about, or the media browser? Um, oh, like a media library. So when you you want to select a file, or you want to select from your existing media. That's collection. that's entity browser. That's entity basically. browser. It's built on entity browser. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that is entity. That's browser. what what you've seen on the screen when I was cho choosing from the images. That's yeah. Just an extension of uh, yeah. entity browser, that, but it is entity browser. Okay, great. Thanks again. And um, next is morning tea, so you can make your way downstairs. Thank you. Thank you.